so this is our second video looking at women of the Bible. I'm glad you're encouraged and challenged by Martha's story and I pray that God will speak to you through this video too. Today we're looking at the story of Esther, one of my favourites. It's such an exciting story which speaks to us of God's presence, sovereignty and providence as well as the way he uses people in his plans. Esther is a strong and courageous woman with a deep trust in God. We don't have time to read or examine the whole story together, but I encourage you to read it for yourself in the book of Esther in the Bible. It's only 10 chapters. Here is an overview of the story. So God's people, the Jews, have been captured and held in exile in Persia. After deposing his queen, the vain king of Persia looks for a new queen to replace her. Esther, who hides her Jewish identity, is selected as one of the young women to be presented to the king. Out of all the women in his harem, the king's favourite is Esther, and so she becomes queen. Now the king gives a man named Haman the highest position in the land, and Haman demands that everyone bow down to him. However, Mordecai, Esther's uncle, refuses to comply. An enraged Haman discovers Mordecai's Jewish nationality and cunningly gets the king to agree to a cruel and crazy decree to destroy all of the Jewish people. Now, when Mordecai hears of this awful plan, he reaches out to Esther and urges her to utilise her unique position to approach the king and persuade him to save their people. He tells her that perhaps God has made her queen for this very reason, for such a time as this. Now, this was incredibly risky for Esther. Even entering the king's presence uninvited could cost her her life, and revealing her Jewish identity could be deadly. However, Esther courageously counts the cost for the sake of saving her people, saying, if I die, I die. She approaches the king with a clever plan of her own, and the king extends mercy. Queen Esther reveals her identity and Haman's evil plan. The king is mortified and issues a counter decree to save and honour the Jews, and instead, Haman is the one to suffer the consequences he had prepared for the Jews. What a story! There is so much we can glean through it. But today we're just going to consider three main themes. God is present, God is sovereign, and God provides. So firstly, God is present. Now, if you've read through the book of Esther, you may have noticed that God isn't actually mentioned. In fact, it's the only book in the Bible which doesn't include God's name. This, me this seems strange at first, but when you start to look at the storyline, you can't help but see God's hand at work, causing coincidences and ironic reversals all over the place. I'm sure while the events were playing out, Esther and her uncle Mordecai must have wondered where God was and why he wasn't intervening. In the midst of the uncertainty and the very real fear for their lives, they must have experienced feelings of desperation, darkness and abandonment. Right now, during this global pandemic, we might be tempted to wonder where God is and whether he really cares. Can he not intervene to stop the spread of the virus and the suffering of our loved ones? Perhaps you're questioning why God has let this happen in your lifetime or why he has placed you in a particular role, either working on the front line or having to stay at home. The book of Esther gives us hope that God is still at work, even when we don't recognise it. He did have a plan and he had Esther exactly where he needed her to be for that time. She was uprooted from her family, forced to marry the king. She was separated from her support network and had strong restrictions on her movement and behaviour. Does that bit sound familiar to anyone else's experience right now? And yet, God was with her. Esther's God is the same God who is at work in our time, in this crisis. And even when God seems to be a million miles away from the tragedies and the turmoil that we see and experience, 
He is always with us and his plans will not be thwarted. The book of Esther brings us a message of hope, which we can hold on to in these dark days. Let's be like Esther and be encouraged that there's no situation so bad that God can't redeem it. Let's choose not to judge the outcome of the battle by the way things look right now. Secondly, we see that God is sovereign. He's powerful and in control. The best way that we can see the sovereignty of God is displayed in Esther's attitude and behaviour. She literally places her life in God's hands, saying, if I die, I die. She trusts God to take care of her despite her forced marriage and the threat to her people. She clearly knows that her identity, her, her eternity is safe with God. And God proves his sovereignty by moving the king to choose Esther as his wife in the first place, but also when he accepts an audience with Esther and listens to her plea. God acted for the safety and security of his people, but also for his own fame and glory. He was clearly in control and nothing happened without his knowledge. And ladies, God is still on the throne today. He is still sovereign and in control over the virus, over our healthcare system, our government, our families and of us. He sees, he knows and he cares. Even the mundane parts of life, caring for children, cleaning, washing up, God sees it all and he uses all the details. He sees the bigger picture even when we don't know why we're experiencing certain things. We tend to just see what's in front of our faces, don't we? The suffering, the death, the family fallout, ruined education. But he has not forgotten or abandoned us, and he can and will intervene. Just maybe not in the ways we expect or think he should. But the fact is that he knows best. Finally, linked with his sovereignty, we also see God's providence in the book of Esther. Providence can be defined as that frequently mysterious, always interesting way in which God provides for his servants in their various needs. It is Romans 8, 28 in action. All things working to the good of those who love God. His plans are always best and he loves to intervene for his people as they walk with him. If the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not be in want, says Psalm 23. He will provide. God loves to supply for the needs of his people, but in his way and his timing. Sometimes what we think we need isn't actually what we need. Only God truly knows how to meet our needs. Esther, materially speaking, had it all in the palace of the king. And yet what did she desire? She sought after God's own heart, the salvation for her and her people. Success, health and wealth might sound like wonderful things that we should all desire, but maybe God desires for something greater for us. He wants us to be satisfied in him alone, and that starts with putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Seeking his salvation above all else, let's give him our lives and surrender control. Let's put our confidence in him. Do you seek salvation above all other gifts? Now we have the benefit of hindsight with Esther's story, but I wonder, is there a time in your life that you can look back on and say, yes, that was God supernaturally providing for me, even though I didn't see it at the time. Just as a personal example of, uh, from my life. So I was meant to be heading out to Africa as a missionary last September, but instead God brought Simon into my life and delayed my plans which was a massive blessing, but also slightly annoying, especially as I like to plan. However, imagine if I had gone, I'd be facing such a difficult year, both personally and also in terms of the pandemic. And I can now see that this delay in my plans is a huge blessing and God protecting me. I couldn't see it so clearly at first, but now I do, with hindsight. So Esther rested in the knowledge that God was present, God was sovereign and that he would provide for her and her people. She didn't lose hope. We may not understand why or what God is doing in our individual circumstances or in this pandemic, but we can trust in the character of God and that we're here for such a time as this. 
You are not abandoned. He is with you and cares for you. If we could gain a bigger picture of his sovereignty, then we could trust in him to provide for us. And so it seems that Esther's story was actually God's story. And he invites you to hand over the controls of your life to him so that your story can be weaved into his story as well. Thanks for listening, ladies. I hope you're blessed.